guys. There are so many things to stress about when having a baby, especially when you're having a baby in another country. But once the little munchkin arrives, there's also another thing to stress about, which is what do we do with it if I'm going back to work or I need some extra help from time to time. So today I'm gonna to try to explain the most popular childcare options in France. I'll go over the terms with you, talk about the things to take into account, and even give you some extra tidbit information that might help you decide what best option is for your family. Though it is actually interesting to keep in mind that 61% of French children under the age of three in 2017 were watched by their parents. So that's actually the most popular childcare option in France, but everybody doesn't have that opportunity. So today I'm gonna to go over what to do if you're going back to work or you need some extra help. I'm hoping this video will demystify some of the scary terms like garde partagé, crèche collectif, assistant maternelle, etc. Please share any comments or questions you have in the comments below. It's great if we can help any of those other foreign moms trying to navigate the world in France. And obviously don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel. All right, let's go. Okay, so let's get some vocabulary out of the way first. The most popular childcare option is in France after their parents watching the kids is assistante maternelle. So an assistante maternelle is normally an at-home childcare worker. So there's a fancy board in France, I don't remember their name, but that has already done the background checks on these persons, the health check, they've gone and they've seen that their home is safe, um, they've decided the maximum amount of kids that they can have at their home, etc. It reminds me a lot of an at-home daycare in the US. And assistante maternelle, it's not just anyone who can sign up, you do have to have a course in France and they do have a certificate. The second most popular option is la crèche. And honestly, when you're pregnant or you have kids in France, you just hear the word la crèche, la crèche, la crèche everywhere because there's actually so many different options of la crèche. So let's talk about some of the different ones. First, you have le crèche collectif. So this to me is like seems like a regular state-run daycare. So there's a director or a directrice of the crèche and they manage all the employees. There's usually about 50 to 60 kids within the daycare, all split up into classes. And there's normally one adult for every five babies who can't yet move and one adult for every eight kids who can at that point toddlers who can walk. The crèche entreprise is pretty much exactly the same thing as a crèche collectif. It's a state-run daycare, there's usually a lot of kids, etc. but it's sponsored by your company, which is really nice because often if you work there, you get priority when it comes to spots in daycare, and it's usually right next to work, which can be really convenient. The crèche familiale is pretty much a mix between an assistant maternelle and a crèche collectif. So it means that your kid goes, say, four days a week to an assistant maternelle where they're in a smaller, more intimate setting with, say, two other kids. And then one day a week, they go to the crèche collectif where they're, you know, in a larger setting with more kids and getting used to more of the hustle and bustle of a larger daycare. The micro crush, it's pretty much the name gives it away, micro, so it's a small daycare. Um, there's usually a maximum of 11 kids at the daycare and they're all ages from zero to three, so they're not split into different rooms. Um, all the kids are together with quite a few adults. So the crèche parentelle is a crèche where like parents are also watching the kids. So there's a full-time staff and it runs similarly to a crèche collective, except the parents are really involved. So if you put your kid in a crèche parentelle, maybe um, they'll ask for you like half a day a week to be there watching the kids and helping. And then maybe they'll ask for a half another half a day of your time going to meetings, help organizing activities, decide what they're going to be having to eat, etc. So you're very involved. The alt gallery is a really great option if you're not necessarily wanting to put your kid in daycare full time. Um, so they allow you to kind of be really flexible in the hours. You can maybe be that just in the mornings or in the afternoons or two times a week. There's just a lot more flexibility. The crush multi accueil just means that they're super flexible when it comes to hours. You want to go full time, there's a spot full for full time. You want to go just in the mornings, you want to go just in the afternoons, there might be a kid doing that. They're just very flexible on the hours, so it's not very strict. So the final one I'm going to say is crèche privé because you do hear about this a lot in Paris where I'm at because a crèche privé is a private daycare. So it's not sponsored by your company and it's not sponsored by the government and it tends to have smaller kids um, but also obviously it's private so usually a bit more expensive. The third most popular option is the nunu, which is the nanny. And just a small tip for you guys, calling your assistant maternelle a nunu 
doesn't really fly, so try not to do that. Um, there's a couple of big differences. The first one being the Nunu actually works at your house or at another family's house, but they don't work out of their own home. And the Assistant Maternelle has to have some type of certificate. The Nunu doesn't have to. Of course, um, he or she can. Um, you're able to hire whoever you want as a Nunu. Um, so there's just those two slight differences, so or large differences, so just don't confuse it. The last one is Le Garde Partage. So this is when you find another family who has a kid around the same age as yours and you split a nanny between. So you've got one nanny watching two kids. And sometimes the nanny will come to one family's house one week and then the other family's the other and you know you drop the kids off or anyways there's lots of ways you can work it out but the idea is just that you have one nanny for two families and they split the cost of the nanny. Okay, now that we've gotten all of those terms out of the way, let's move on to the juicy details. How do I choose which childcare option is best for me? Or you? First off, all options are not always available, so that eliminates things very quickly. State-run facilities are very competitive based on the demand, so things like Le Système Maternel and Crèche Collective, often they're just not enough places for everybody. I was looking at some stats in France that were showing that like 50% of families nationally who have asked for a place in a state-run facility don't end up getting one in the three years. But if you want to try, you need to go and sign up at your local Mary. So most Marys accept your file or your dossier when you're six months pregnant. So as soon as you hit that mark, waddle on over there, set up your file. A lot of it's based on whether or not you get a spot is a point system. So they give out points based on your revenue, based on if you're a single family or if both parents are working. It's really just a need-based thing. So I don't want to discourage you from going and trying those options out, but depending on where you live, it might be quite competitive to get one. The next thing that eliminates options is, of course, your budget. Now, I don't want to get into the nitty gritty details of how much uh, things cost because it's so much depends in France on your revenue, whether you're getting CAF, whether you're getting tax rebates, where you live, how many children you have. So I'm going to try to stay away from that and be very general, but generally state run options are the cheapest. So things like the Crèche Collectif or Le Système Maternel or anything that's sponsored by your company, for example, those tend to be more budget friendly. The most expensive options tend to be the private Crèche. Um, I live in Paris and those are definitely above the 1,000 euros, 1,500 euros a month for sure, or having a new new, so a nanny that comes to your house just for your child, your family, that's definitely very expensive as well. However, a garde partage is a really good in-between. This tends, it depends, of course, how much you're paying your nanny and that you split with the other family, but this can be an almost as affordable option as state-run daycare, especially if you wanted a state-run daycare spot and you don't get it. The garde partage is what a lot of people, at least in Paris, are doing. I'll be interested to know if you guys have some insights on other areas of France, but garde partage is very popular. To find out more about the cost and what could kind of fit your budget, there are lots of simulators online and I'll put some below in the description so that you can try to use that and see. Um, but you can also go and check with your local Mary and they'll give you some information too. And then obviously you just need to choose what's best for your family. So to wrap up the video, here are some tidbits that friends and families and advice that they gave us while we were trying to choose what was best for us that I thought were especially helpful. Guard partage. It's not very stable sometimes. If the nanny's sick, there's nobody to cover for you. If the other family wants to leave, you have no way to pay the nanny all by yourself and you're scrambling to find a new family. It's actually a lot of work to have a new new or to do the guard partage. You're actually, you're employing somebody. So you become an employer with an employee and there is a lot of paperwork in France for that. So keep that in mind. There's a lot of setup and if you're an expat, it can be really confusing. It's really convenient to have childcare come to your house or to somebody else's house right next to you in the neighborhood. So if you can handle the setup, most people thought it was really worth it. The second you put your kid in a crèche collectif with 60 other kids, they will start coming home in the first couple of months with more illnesses than you've ever heard of. This is just the name of the game when it comes to a larger setting and prepares them for school in the future, but be ready for a rough couple of months of adapting. At the creche, your kids learn to eat everything. Get ready for meals that are five course meals done by chefs on a national schedule. It's insane and amazing. The creche also takes care of diapers, 
formula, food. So when you're having to invest into like a double stroller with the other family that you're in the guard partage with, you won't have any of those things when it comes to a daycare. When you have a guard partage, you have to actually coordinate vacation time with the other family so that the nanny has some vacation at the same time. So we've got a lot of vacation in France, so do employees, so that's a lot of organization on both ends with the families. If you are desperate for a spot in a state-run daycare and you don't get it, lots and lots of people go to the mairie and they cry and they cry again and eventually they find them a spot. So if you are desperate, definitely be like the French and go back and explain how terribly bad you need this spot. It's very French, but I know you can do it. All right, guys, I hope this video was helpful in navigating all the scary territory of having a baby in France. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please leave all your comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, and I will see everybody next Wednesday. Bisous.